In the previous video, we defined prefix codes, and we saw that they were nice in terms of our criteria of speed and simplicity. They were speedy because we could just instantaneously, so to speak, as we read each, you know, as we read the, the symbols, the encoded symbols, as soon as we got to the end of, a, of an encoded code word, we could just immediately read off what the corresponding source symbol that generated it was. And they were simple because we could think about them in terms of, for example, in terms of their tree representation. And that's a nice visual way to sort of understand one of these prefix codes, or we could just, you know, just directly in terms of the prefix condition itself. So those are, those are some nice properties of prefix codes. And maybe I should mention here, in terms of the, the speed of decoding, for a prefix code, it's, it's linear time. If you're a computer scientist, you may be interested to know. So it's linear time because once you, when you have this tree, as you read each of the, the, the code, the, the symbols in the encoded message, you can just traverse down this tree. You start out at the root and you just traverse the tree. And when you get to a leaf, then you spit out the, the source symbol at that leaf and then you go back to the root. And so the, the decoding time is, is very fast. Linear time is essentially the best that you could, I mean, it's the best that you could possibly do. So we know that it's, it's speedy and simple, but is it efficient? Have we lost anything in the way of efficiency? So that's, that's the, the next sort of thing that we're going to address and the Kraft McMillan inequality will be essential for us. And it turns out, fortunately and surprisingly perhaps, that the answer is no. We have not lost anything in terms of efficiency by focusing our attention only on prefix codes. So that's going to be a consequence of the Kraft McMillan inequality, which is our next project. But before we, we get into all that, let me just maybe back up for a second and, and review the big picture of where we are. So let's go back up here. So we started out way back up here to Morse and Bale. So we, we had some terminology here and we, you know, a source and a just a memory list source and a discrete memory list source. We defined these things, a discrete memory list source was just a sequence of random variables that were IID taking values in some source alphabet script X. And when they're discrete, then that source alphabet is countable. Typically, almost always, it's going to be finite. And, uh, and then we, we defined what a symbol code is or a variable length code. And that was just a function C from our source alphabet to, to code words. We told, we called these, we referred to these, these, um, these, the, the elements of a star in the image of C as code words. So these were the sequences of symbols, a one up to a K where each a a I was in the our, our, our code alphabet a. So those, those sequences of symbols, those strings are those, those, all of them make up the set A star and the ones that, that C maps to are the code words. And then we looked at some examples and we had our A, B, and C. We defined unique decodability, which was a key property. And then we started looking at these things, efficiency, speed, and simplicity. And we arrived at the notion of a prefix code. It was just a very nice, nice type of code that we found. So let's summarize the situation here. We can draw the picture. Let's draw a picture. So the picture is we have prefix codes. And then I claim that every prefix code is uniquely decodable and you are going to prove that if you haven't already as an exercise. And then we have the set of all possible codes. and they might not all be uniquely decodable. So, so I claim that what I, what I referred to in, in, in the, the nice fact about the Kraft, or one of the nice facts, there's other things too, one of the nice fac facts about the Kraft-McMillan inequality is that it will allow us to focus only on prefix codes. We can essentially ignore all these other uniquely decodable codes that are not prefix because what the Kraft Macmillan inequality is going to tell us is that for any uniquely decodable code, there is a prefix code which is just as good in terms of efficiency, 
in terms of our criterion A here, in terms of how good a, a compression it obtains. So for any uniquely decodable code, there's a prefix code that is just as good. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start towards that result next. But first, we're gonna have to define what we mean by good, and that will come into and, and that's where probabilities are going going to come into play, and 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 we'll have to define the notion of the expected length of a code, expected code word length of a code. So we'll start looking at that next.